All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for coming over, man. Look, we are back on the Grunge channel. This title right here, there's no one left from the original lineup of these bands. Now, I know some, uh, who is that? Journey sticks out to me. Um, reasons. I want to know reasons why um, a lot of people aren't, like, I mean, they said there is no one left from the original. I don't know if this is them talking about people passing away or bands that have the same name but not none of the original people that's what i'm trying to say yeah 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 so again make sure you guys are subscribed to the grunge channel man they got a lot of great videos over here just press play and you'll be amazed all right <clears throat> shout out to all the good humans link is always in the description for those who are asking so we ain't gonna waste no more time let's jump right into it Legal battles, splinter factions, and the looming grasp of the Grim Reaper have taken away all of the original members from these bands. Southern rock band Blackfoot has had an extremely complicated history. Blackfoot. Originally formed in 1969 with Ricky Medlock, Greg T. Walker, Charlie Hargrit, and Jackson Spires, the group chose their name to honor the Native American heritage many of the members shared. But before the group could really gain any traction, Medlock was asked to join Leonard Skinner and he didn't hesitate for a second. So Blackfoot was put on hold for a few years. The four original Blackfoot members reformed the group in 1974 and finally released their first album, No Reservations in September 1975. This kicked off a stable and successful period for the band, during which they released their signature songs, Highway Song and Train Train. Blackfoot's fortunes turned for the worse in the following decades as they broke up in 1986. A new lineup released the 1987 album, Rick Medlock and Blackfoot, which aimed for a more modern sound. But eventually, Medlock was once again invited to join Leonard Skinner and once again left Blackfoot without a second thought. Dang. Medlock rebooted the band in 2012 with himself as manager and producer and hired hands playing the instruments. It's essentially a totally different band with a sound the founding members wouldn't recognize. The wow. legendary rock group. So like, how do y'all feel about that? He said a completely different band that people like the sound is different. Hmm. Comment below. The Yardbirds led directly to several other seminal bands, including Led Zeppelin, the Jeff Beck Group, and Cream. Then there was Renaissance, formed in 1969 by former Yardbirds Keith Ralph and Jim McCarty. The original lineup also included Ralph's sister Jane, keyboardist John Hawken, and bassist Louis Chenema. Both Ralph siblings were gone after recording two albums, so McCarty reformed the band with an entirely new lineup by 1971, including Annie Haslam as the new lead vocalist. Then McCarty also left the band and the lineup began to stabilize by 1975 with the release of their classic album Scheherazade and other stories. Renaissance had established itself as a leading progressive rock band, but those tumultuous early years means that the original lineup lasted only about two years and that the vast bulk of the band's material has nothing to do with any of the founding musicians. Formed by childhood friends Brian Downey and Phil Lynott in 1969, Irish rock band Thin Lizzy established themselves as one of the most ferocious groups in the world in the 70s. Their twin guitar sound peaked with the release of their 1976 album, Jailbreak, Jailbreak which featured their signature song, The Boys Are Back in Town. If I don't get back to Dublin within three months, then I really start to suffer from homesickness. <laughs> But by the early 80s, the band was struggling between the changing sound of pop music and Lynott's growing heroin addiction. The band Dang. simply couldn't survive, and they broke up in 1983. Lynott passed away in 1986, and then Downey put together a new lineup in the mid-90s, but then he eventually left the band himself in 2013. This left Thin Lizzy with zero original members, though current guitarist Scott Gorham joined back in 1974 and played on their most successful albums. After Downey left the band, Gorham formed Black Star writers as a way to create original music that was distinct from Thin Lizzy, though he left that group in 2021 to concentrate on Thin Lizzy. Known for wearing outrageous latex costumes and adopting stage names like Odorous Urungus and Techno Destructo, Guar has certainly the... been one of a kind. Mad Max is going on here. <laughs> Yo. This look like backstage WWF or something. This is, what were they called? War? 
since their formation in 1984. You might wonder if you're supposed to take them seriously, but guar was always meant to be a form of performance art that melted heavy metal with a sense of the absurd, making things even more complex as the ever-changing lineup of the band, with more than three dozen performers having been part of guar at one point or another. All that turnover means it's not too surprising that there are no longer any original members in the band at all. That's been the case since the 2014 death of Dave Brocky, aka Odorous Urungus, although it is worth noting that current vocalist and occasional bassist Mike Bishop, while not technically a founding member, did play on the group's 1988 debut, Hello, How Much All This- I'ma tell you this, if I didn't know about this band and I got invited to a party and they showed up, I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. It looked like hell. This matters is an open question, since the various members of Guar are hidden behind ludicrous costumes and frequently cycle in and out of the band. You might not even know who's playing on stage anyway if you catch one of their shows. All that's guaranteed is that it won't be any of the original members. That's narrowed it down considerably. Molly Hatchet were never right. the biggest band in the world, but they were nevertheless very influential in the southern rock genre. They were pretty successful at the height of their fame, releasing multiple platinum albums, including 1979's Flirtin' with Disaster, which hit number 19 on the Billboard charts and has sold more than 2 million copies. Yeah. If all that makes you excited to see Molly Hatchet in concert, you're in luck, as the band is still on the road regularly. But you should know that you won't be seeing a single original member on the stage, as the last living one of them, guitarist Steve Holland, Holland passed away in 2020, but Holland had already left the band decades earlier in 1984, so it was actually in 2017, when founding guitarist Dave Lubeck passed away, that Molly Hatchet entered its era of zero original members. In the early days of the band, Holland and Lubeck were soon joined by vocalist Danny Joe Brown, guitarist Dwayne Rowland, bassist Banner Thomas, and drummer Bruce Crump, who have also since passed away. That means there's no possibility of ever seeing Molly Hatchet in its true form ever again. Man. The longest serving member in the current lineup is guitarist Bobby Ingram, who joined the band in 1987. Swedish band Opeth may not exactly be a household name, but they've had a significant impact on the genre of progressive metal. They have their origins in death metal, but they've evolved to include intricate arrangements and a surprisingly wide variety of instrumentation, and they've been fairly successful at it, with four albums landing in the top 40 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. Opeth have also embraced a wide variety of band members. In fact, they haven't had an original member since 1992, just two years after their founding. At the band's very beginning, Beginning in 1990, lead singer David Isberg invited Michael Okerfeld to be the new bassist without telling the current bassist or any of the other members. A fight broke out about it, and every other member left the group. Isberg and Okerfeld forged ahead, but the next few years were also tumultuous. The band added and lost six different members until 1992, when Isberg himself left and Okerfeld took over singing duties. Opeth eventually released their debut album Orchid in 1995, and they've been going strong ever since, with Okerfeld as the only consistent member. Yeah, it's that guy. It's Michael from Opeth. If you were alive and rocking in the mid-80s, you probably Autograph. remember the glam band Autograph and their one big hit song, Turn Off the Radio. And if you're still paying attention to them, you might have noticed they released a new album called Beyond in November of 2022. But if you catch the band on tour in support of that album, you won't get to see any of the original members. Unfortunately, Man. founding bassist Randy Rand, who was the last original active member, passed away in April 2022. Autograph broke up in 1989 and then reformed in 2013 with original members members Rand, Steve Lynch, and Kenny Richards, the latter of whom passed away in 2017. That incarnation... So, I mean, how... Well, I mean, of course you have to get the okay. But me, like me personally, like me personally, if I had the talents, the abilities, and all that stuff to do music, I wouldn't want to use someone else's name or their aura, or their, you know what I mean? I would want to do something on my own because the first thing people are going to say is they don't sound nothing or, you know, I just don't understand why someone would want to take on that name. You know what I mean? And even why they would approve that. It's one thing if the family... You know, it's the kids that decided to do music. I, I don't know. I don't know. Comment below what y'all think about that. Like, I'm all for, like, people continuing on with the legacies and, like, 
if you got a band of four members, one person passed away, you're trying to replace or just have somebody fill it. That's totally different compared to a whole new group in a completely different sound with the same name. Released two new albums, Stan Lynch left the band again in 2019. After Rand's death, the band kept going without any original members, and then a legal fight broke out between Lynch and the current lineup over ownership of the band's name and trademark. Lynch and there it is. <laughs> oh, I just all I had to do was let the video play. Okay, okay. So it wasn't approved claims that the band is contractually obligated to have at least one original member to be able to use the name autograph. Right. As far as he's concerned, the current iteration is now more of a tribute band than the real thing and is only in it for the money. There was a time when Foreigner absolutely dominated the pop and rock charts. In oh, fact, yeah. it was an impressively long period. Between 1977 and 1990, the band logged 21 songs in the top 100 with Ooh. 9 in the top 10 and Dang. a number one smash in the form of I Wanna Know What Love Is in 1984. They also released six top 10 albums, including four, which hit number one in 1981. Then in 1989, lead singer Lou Graham left the group. Instead of breaking up, Foreigner hired a new singer, Johnny Edwards, and released an album without Graham. Although Graham returned in 1992, precedent had already been set. When Graham left again in 2003, founder and lead guitarist Mike Jones hired another new singer, Kelly Hansen, and soldiered on. Fast forward to 2023, and Mick Jones is now the only original member still associated with Foreigner, though not all the time. While he's officially still in the band and still performs with them, he doesn't always show up. In fact, when the band toured Israel in 2018, he was too ill to join them, so that entire tour lacked original members. Jones will turn 80 in December 2024, and he had heart surgery back in 2012. Ever since then, he's been a somewhat unreliable presence. The Drifters were formed way back the in Drifters. 1953, and they remain one of the most famous bands of the era. Even if you're not a huge fan of doo-wop, you may very well know some of their iconic songs, like There Goes My Baby yeah. on Broadway or Under the Boardwalk, and you can still hear the Drifters perform those classics on stage, as long as you don't mind the fact that they haven't included any original members since 1955, or technically since 1953, if you're being picky. Clyde McFadder formed the Drifters in 1953 at the urging of the legendary Ahmed Artigan, founder of Atlantic Records. By the time McFadder left the following year, things got complicated as he sold his half of the group to his manager George Treadwell. Treadwell then recruited a band called the Five Crowns, led by Ben E. King, to become the New Drifters. More lineup changes ensued, with at least 20 different singers recording songs for the Drifters in their heyday. By the early 21st century, as many as a dozen groups were touring simultaneously under the name. Some included members from an official version of the band, but none with a truly original member. Member. That would be impossible anyway, since the last remaining original, Bill Pinky, passed away in 2007. Considering that the history of the Oak Ridge Boys hey. dates all the way back to 1943, it's not too surprising that no original members remain in the group. In that year, gospel music legend Wally Fowler founded a group called the Georgia Clodhoppers in Knoxville, Tennessee. The, the name was changed to the Oak Ridge Quartet a few years later, and then they disbanded in the early 50s. Fowler eventually sold the rights to the group in 1957. The band continued to perform, sometimes calling themselves the Oak Ridge Boys, and the name change became permanent in 1966. Throughout the 1960s, the band concentrated on Southern gospel music, but by the 70s... Brother looking like my brother from Hall and Oates, brother uh, John Oates back there with that stash. Woo! He looked like Al from uh, Home Improvement. Man. They crossed Double over into the mainstream country scene. They scored their biggest hit in 1981 with a cover of Elvira, which was originally recorded by Dallas Frazier in 1966. While the Oak Ridge Boys continued to record albums and tour, the longest serving member of the band, William Lee Golden, only joined the group in 1965. By that point, the group's history already stretched back more than 20 years. Dwayne Allen joined the next year, while Richard Sturban joined in 1972, and then Joe Bonsall arrived in 1973. While these four musicians make up what most people would think of as the iconic Oak Ridge Boys lineup and have been together for decades, none of them were technically there in the beginning. Again, man, um, I'm all for someone filling in. You you will never be able to replace a, a original artist, you know, because a lot of times it's the charisma, the character, all that stuff, but 
when you go and just bring in, like, there's five members, and let's say they leave, they pass, whatever the case may be, you bring in a whole nother five and keep the name, that's actually crazy to me. That is actually crazy that someone would think that that is okay to, I would not want to carry that, you know, because even if you sound better than them, they ain't nobody going to tell you that. <laughs> but all right, man, I can't wait to see the comments on this video. You guys, please tell me your thoughts. Again, shout out to the Grunge channel. Thank you guys for coming over and watching, and I hope y'all enjoyed. Peace out.